to Knowledge is Power Podcast Live with your host, Tony Redfield, and my co-host, LaDonna Sherwood and Francis Lawkins. Knowledge is Power Podcast Live starts now. All right, we are on. Hey, LaDonna, your, your deal, my girl. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we sure can. Yeah. Okay, Knowledge is Power Podcast Live is a platform to share important information by educating Southeast Texas African American communities with valuable information on health, education, finance, politics, and business. We pride ourselves on having our hand on the pulse of the community, honey, keeping you up to date on information going on in and around the Golden Triangle and the surrounding areas. Tonight, we have a very important guest, Mr. Mel Renfro, and we are super excited to have him on with us. Well, hello, cousin. You know, I'm so glad to have you. I'm glad you, you accept my invitation tonight. How are well, you? Thank, thank you. I am uh, proud to be on the show. I am just so glad to hear uh, about all that you are doing. Uh, I knew you were doing a lot, but I didn't know you were doing this much. I thought... <laughs> Really, you a lot of what you were doing were involved around sports, but uh, I see that you have your hands involved in a lot of things that are so important to uh, the community, and uh, it looks like you reach out to a lot of people. Well, thank you, thank you. You know, I'm so glad you're here, and uh, because in Southeast Texas, you're a legend. You know, you this is Cowboys country, Dallas Cowboys country. They they are they are. They're, they're strong here in, in this area, except myself. You know, I, I, I retired when you retired, but anyway, I am so glad you're here because I everywhere I go, they say, "Hey, how's Mel? What is he doing? Is he still in Dallas or is he in you know Portland or where is he doing?" So tonight, they've got a chance now to hear what you've been what you've been doing and how things going. And uh, we was talking earlier about uh, you was born in Houston, Texas, and you know, and and we're that part of town, our family are from the that part of town and Fifth Ward and and um, East Texas around the Jasper area. We have a lot of folks in that area also in Carson County. But anyway, Mel, Mel, you moved to to, to Portland and um, um, at an early age, and you play ball uh, at Oregon, correct? Yes. Uh... Back in 1960, uh, well, we moved to Portland, Oregon in, in, the, in 1944. Went to grade school, high school, Jefferson High School in Portland, Oregon, the University of Oregon, and uh, played 14 years with the Dallas Cowboys and uh, spent most of my life there. And, you know, after 14 seasons with the Cowboys, was fortunate enough to have a, a, a glorious, successful season and being able to go into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But you know, and not a lot of a lot of people don't know this, but and and they are Cowboys fans too. They don't know that you was a two way starter at Oregon in college. Well, yeah, you know, back in in my day, I never left the field. <laughs> yeah, you know, even in high school, you know, we uh, from the time the game starts to the time to finish, you're on the field. You played offense, you played defense, you played all the special teams, and even in college, uh, you played. Uh, the entire time. So I was on the field uh, as an offensive player and a defensive player uh, running the ball and playing defense. So it was natural that uh, I was multifaceted. Of course, once you got into the pros, yeah. you know, they more or less specialized you. So I just played one position. Yeah. Now, you know, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I'm going to let my girls come in and ask you a few questions because they're all excited. You know, back in um, in the 60s when uh, you played uh, Texas and, and you played Rice, uh, what they don't know is that back then that it was segregated and we was not welcome to the stadium. And matter of fact, uh, at that time, it was a Southwest Conference um, in college and those schools didn't accept Blacks as a uh, uh, athlete. As a matter of fact, they didn't accept you as a student. So coming down here in 62 and 63, and you played Rice down in Rice Stadium, they had never seen a ball player like you before that played both ways. When you, and I remember reading the paper that they said Renfro scorched the, the Rice Owls by yourself, and you had to stand an ovation from just those people. You know, Renfro runs Rice ragged 
That's it. That's it. That's the game. Actually, actually, uh, you know, uh, before the game, uh, because uh, of the segregation, they they couldn't. We couldn't eat with the team, so they had to find a special place for our team to go eat before the game. So there were a lot of things that happened differently. Uh, one thing that happened after the game, the Rice uh, fans, the students, mobbed me after the game. They came down and were they put me on their shoulders. They were carrying me off the field. They were tearing pieces of the clothes off of them and giving it to me uh, because I had such a good game. And we made head headway that night as far as race relations. And like I say, my grandparents were there. My granddad was there. And uh, it, it was just a breakthrough. And that was probably one of the gr uh, greatest moments of my life to be able to see that happen. And, and, and getting back to Oregon after that, uh, the students on campus has, saw the game on TV and told me what an impression that it had made on the national TV audience. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to say that I was a part of that movement. Well, I am too. I think, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think given the current climate of today's Black Lives Matter movement, it's important to speak with people like yourself that are kind of trailblazers in a way that have kind of, uh, you know, just blazed the path for people like us. Now, let me ask you, because this is on a side note, be honest with me. Were you afraid? Were you ever afraid playing in some of these segregated places? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't know any better. You know, okay. I, I, I didn't know any better to be afraid. If, if I had known the seriousness of what might or could have happened, I might have shied away. But, you know, I forged ahead in, on many different fronts back then because, I, you know, I thought what was wrong was wrong and I should do or say something about it. I, I uh, filed a civil rights lawsuit in Dallas uh, during my plan days about a housing situation that I was asked not to do it, even by the cowboy organization, because it caused a ripple. I didn't know any better. You know, I was from the North and I didn't, uh, I didn't encounter any problems or racism up there to any extent that I was aware of. So uh, just being uh, unaware of the, the seriousness of, of what the consequences might be, I just forged ahead. And maybe that, that was, the thing to do, or obviously it was the thing to do. Uh, maybe not have been smart, but uh, you know, it, it happened and it, it, it opened up some doors. So uh, I think that uh, I'm glad that I did it. And uh, all the things that are happening nowadays, you know, I'm, I'm just hopeful and prayerful that uh, things work out and we get this terrible situation turned around. Yeah. I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm sitting over here in awe. I guess having come up in the South, it really is a huge, tremendous difference because I, I can honestly say I have a fear of a lot of things on a day-to-day -day basis. And I mean, just growing up in Beaumont, it's a bunch of things that I may want to do. Or I may think about doing that. I just know better than to do it. <laughs> so that's kind of good. I, I I wondered if you would be afraid, but I guess not. You didn't come up in that time or place. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, let, let me uh, give you an instance. When uh, my uh, my dad, uh, when we were in Oregon in, in 1955, uh, we, we drove down to Houston to visit the family. We hadn't been down there since, the four, four, since we left in 44. And we were driving from Portland to Houston, and we were somewhere in Oklahoma. And my dad went into a, uh, a cafe to get some coffee. And I jumped out of the car and ran into the cafe, not knowing that it was segregated territory. And my dad said, you get yourself back in that car because, you know, some those white folks, you know, they could have grabbed me or they could have did something to us but my dad got the coffee we jumped in the car and took off and he told me he said you know you got to be careful you got to know where you're at i had no idea we had just come from portland and, and we were going to an area where it was different so uh, you know it, 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 you just have to understand you know like you say uh, Donna, you know where you came up and the things that did you have experienced and and and, and, and th where I came from, the things I've experienced is kind of a different mindset. But we got to understand that there's some stuff going on out there that we have to 
be aware of and, and, and understand how to deal with it. And we still have to deal with it. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Francis? Well, I was just uh, reading again, just looking at your resume. You have, as I mentioned before, quite an extensive resume. I mean, oh my God, you are very decorated. You have so many, um, so many awards and so many accomplishments and so many great things to be proud of. Can you tell me what your greatest? And you have to choose one. You have so many. Can you tell me what your greatest honor? Think back. Well, you know, uh, uh, I'm, you're not the only one that's asked me that question. <laughs> I, I've been asked that you question. Choose. You have so much mi- here. Mi- a million times. Uh, <laughs> and I, but I, I can't really answer. You know, that, that's an impossible question. You know, here I am with all those, all those things there that I've accomplished. You know, I've been so blessed. My fifth grade teacher told me, uh, she pulled me aside. Now I'm ten. I'm ten years old. She said, "I see something in you. I see something in you. One day you're gonna do something great." Oh, wow. Here I'm a little ten year old kid, not understanding. You know, I knew I could run a little faster than some mm-hmm. of the other kids. I could do this. I could do that. But never knowing, I'm a little ten year old kid, and she's saying, "You're gonna be somebody." Mm-hmm. And when I got to where I got, and I was somebody, I I looked her up. She's 80 years old. I looked her up and I visited her and I said, thank you, Mrs. Honeywell, for, <laughs> for giving me the forewarning. And uh, and I kept working hard like you told me to do. Keep doing what you're doing and you're going to yeah. get it. But I can't pick one thing. Uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame was kind of the culmination of everything that I had done. Well, I, I, was hoping, I was hoping you would wear your jacket tonight. <laughs> Tony, that's your fault, man. You should have told me I how to dress. I was dress. hoping. I would tell you, Tony. Yeah, Tony it, don't want it, you to wear your cowboy stuff because Tony gives everybody with the cowboys a hard time. He know he's cowboy country, <laughs> but he steady picks these fights that he know he can't win. <laughs> yeah, I, I started to wear some of those rings, but I said, no, I don't want to. <laughs> don't, don't, oh, don't, yeah. don't bring no rings out. <laughs> bring all your rings out, Mr. Renfro, <laughs> yes, and yes. your jacket. Yeah, you know, I, I now, hear tell, so. Go ahead. Look, I'm I'm interested to know: Do you still? Are you still? Um, do you still visit with the Cowboys? Do you still? You know, some of the ones, some of the greater ones that have come after you. Um, have you? Do you have a chance to? Because I know that you guys do Hall of Fame things all the time, and you get together. But tell me about that. Tell me how exciting that is. Tell me how you've impacted those players and. Just a little bit about that, uh, about the organization. Well, yeah, every year, of course, we go to the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Famers do up until the last this past year with the the COVID. But with the Cowboys, we would get together every year and have uh, a a gathering, uh, go to the the stadium. And, uh, of course, uh, Jerry Jones would invite us out and we'd have a party. And they get Mm -hmm. to talk to to all the guys and uh, just have a party and have a get together. So. Yeah, we did on a regular basis up until this past year or so. Of course, my health isn't my, – my wife is, is is holding up my Hall of Fame jacket in front of me. Oh, bring it, bring it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> but they said don't bring the rings. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I will – have a list to break show you the ring because these Cowboys fans hadn't seen a ring in 25 years. <laughs> Tony, you know what? You could have left that uh, out. See I, what I'm I, saying? I got, I got him put away. She probably can't. Yeah, she probably got away. I, got him, I got him in the vault. You know, it has changed so much. Football has changed so much, um, Mel. And, and um, I back in your time in 65, 64, when you was drafted by Dallas, I know you I know you received a huge signing bonus and and mm-hmm. and and, and uh, guaranteed money. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just kidding, you know. But just, 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 just for instance, please tell, tell, tell my audience, what was your salary? You was, you were first round pick, and what was your salary in '64? I, I signed a con, a three year contract, uh, my rookie year, um, three years at bonus. Added for uh, eighty-five thousand dollars, three oh. years bonus included. 
bonus was twenty five thousand. Oh, that's a lot of money back then. Those days, it really was. It, was. <laughs> it really it was. was a lot of money, you know. You could no. get a Lexus for about ten thousand, fifteen. <laughs> no, they wouldn't make Lexus then. <laughs> they mm -hmm. wouldn't make oh. Lexus then. Oh, these, guys, okay. these guys, these guys make more than one play the now than I made my whole career. Yeah, they more do. Than they, one play, one game, one play. One play, than I made my whole career. Ain't that something? Got to put that in perspective. You can't. Right, right. It that's is. Right. Lexus wasn't there. Oh Lord. Yeah, we're talking way back, young lady. We're talking in the you talk about in the '60s. Let me baby. Google. Let me Google what car, Mister yeah. Renfro. What car did you buy? A car? Did you leave, did you do that? What that did you buy? That was that twenty five thousand. That went to a car. Okay. Yeah, they, they bought me a car. Well, actually, oh, no, no, okay. no, no, no. Let my memory go back. They gave me uh, twenty five thousand cash and then a, a car, which was twenty five thousand. Yeah, the car cost okay. twenty five thousand. Yeah, the car would have been twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> well, oh, okay. Brand new sixty four pink Grand Prix. That's right. Yeah, right. Grand Prix. That's right. And you were smoking there back then. Oh yeah, too. driving. Time. Time. <laughs> I was happy, you know. Yeah. 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 But you know, um, I, I hit you, you. You played for the Dallas Cowboys for fourteen straight years. Fourteen straight years. That's not heard of. Uh, today and um, the, the hot, that's how much the league has changed from that time until today and um, I feel like you, you the equipment wasn't as good as it is today as well so I'm going to bring you back to 66 when you played in, in, in Green Bay and uh, that was the evening I cried like a baby when you played Green Bay in the frosted, frosted tundra of the uh, in the Green Bay Stadium, Ice Bowl, yeah, Ice Bowl, and uh, I can remember seeing you standing up there at the goal line, just shaking your head, and I, you know what I was doing? I was crying because I was a true Cowboy fan. That was our year that year, wasn't it? Right. Uh, yeah. Actually, that was '67. Yeah. '67. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're on the one yard line, you know. Uh, yeah, that was, yeah. It was, that, it was yeah, below yeah, zero. Yeah, you weren't the, yeah, 13, 13 degrees below zero. Wind chill factor was, I don't know, 43 degrees below zero. You know, it was, you know, everybody, you know, right after I ran on the field, I couldn't feel my hands anymore. The whole game, I couldn't feel my hands. It was so cold. I know. It took, it took me 15 minutes after the game to take my uniform off because I couldn't use my hands. I had to run my hands under cold water for five minutes to thaw them out enough to take my uniform off. So that was a miserable experience. And, and the game should not have been played. It should have been postponed. But, you know, that's, that, that's, that's, that's part of history. Mm -hmm. Girls, do you have any questions? I have a question. Um, I was interested in the 14 years with Dallas Cowboys. Can you tell us a little bit about the culture there? Tell us a little bit about the climate in those 14 years. Did, was it like a family? Tell me about being a player at Dallas for 14 years. What, what, what was that culture like? One thing I will say about the Dallas Cowboy organization and football team, players, coaches, and families was that's what we were, a family. That's why we were – a winning football team and a winning organization. We had a great coach. We had great players. Uh, we had great people. Uh, right after my first year, we started winning. Uh, my second year, we were seven and seven, went to a playoff game. And from then on, we went on for 10 consecutive winning, well, 10 consecutive winning seasons and uh, went to uh, eight NFC championship games, four Super Bowls. We were a happy team. Uh, we had teammates, uh, you know, uh, we had no racial issues between us players. And we all got along extremely well. We had social gatherings. We enjoyed our time together. And, uh, and, and that's why, you know, we became America's team, you know, back in the yeah. 60s and 70s. And there was no mystery to that. It's because we got along so well. We played so well together. Uh, we had a great coach. And uh, the the atmosphere was good, and uh, we had a, a few little situations in Dallas, uh, uh, but there was there was nothing that we couldn't overcome, and that we didn't overcome. 
And that's because we became successful and, and went to playoff games and went to Super Bowls and had a successful team. What year was that franchise um, organized, actually? 1960 was the first year. Oh, my wow. First year, my first year was 64. Okay. Okay. Wow. You know, Beaumont is, is considered, is, is pro, proclaimed the pro football capital of the world. You knew that, right? <laughs> I knew that. I may have heard capital. that somewhere. Yeah, pro capital. Uh, pro capital right. had more NFL players at one time in the NFL. That's that played, right. That was from Beaumont, you know. Um, a lot of those family too. Right. Uh -huh. the, Smith, the Smith boys, Smith yeah, boys, right. And I was other cousin, a male and Miller Farr and Jerry right. and Vice. So you know, we're a football family. Right. And um, but um, Francis, you have another question yeah. you ask? Yeah. How did you feel when you got your first ring? What was that feeling? Ah. <sighs> It, you know, I, a lot of people don't never get those things. I know it's, uh, it's an honor to show up on the field that day. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it, wow. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I when I, I go around the country sometimes, I, I wear my rings and and people just go crazy. <laughs> you know, and I've got, I've got a bunch of rings. I've got I know I've got four, two winners Super Bowl rings, two runner up Super Bowl rings, and I've got. Two Hall of Fame rings, and uh, I just got a bunch of You're rings. Bad I, man, I love every one of them, you know, from the first <laughs> one to the last one. <laughs> All because, right. look, Amel, you look great, man. You look mm -hmm. good, uh, regardless Thank of what you go, you look wonderful. It's good. I, I was just telling my husband, that. I said, You know, Mr. Renfro, he seems to have an impeccable memory, he appears to be in good health. You meet a bunch of football players that don't really have it together like you give us the secret on that okay forget well, all about all the rest of that tell us how you maintain this uh pristine image and the way you look and the memory that you have uh, you know i thank you for saying i've got a good memory because i i can't remember what i had for breakfast this morning <laughs> uh i i have gotten so much but i i, I remember enough and uh uh, thank you for saying that. Um, uh, I struggle with some things, you know, daily, but you know, life has been so good to me, and uh, you know, I, I cherish, uh, you know, every day, every minute, and and I just look forward to tomorrow. Yeah. Now, now you have overcome cancer a couple of times, correct? Uh, I, I had prostate cancer a few years back, and uh, it's it's uh, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone, and so I'm basically my vitals are in good shape. Uh, I've got some pain issues, right. which all, all of us old guys do, but uh, my vitals are good. And uh, so that's, that's I, feel happy, I feel happy about that. Yes, God is good. <laughs> yes, he is. And, you know, my, my co hosts, they, they, are, they are behind the screens smiling and giggling. <laughs> Well, I can see one of them. Yeah, <laughs> that the one's hiding behind a the picture there. Yeah, she's she does yeah. been dodging, but they're so excited. I, 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 I'm just gonna let them take over. Go ahead, girls. Well, I want to know, Michael Irvin, is he? I, I watch him all the time on TV. Is he is his his um disposition? Is it the, is it always the same like that? Because it seems like the Cowboy franchise picks some of the lightest hearted guys and most fun and crazy guys there are. And I don't know if it's the talent or how that how that actually happens, but the culture, just from years and just from having this conversation with you, it just seems like that's just the way that a cowboy, a Dallas cowboy player, professional just comes across, just like a breath of fresh air. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't get to see Michael uh, uh, up close and personal, uh, hardly Tell at all. About that high. But yeah, but I, I you know, I, I see, I hear, I hear, I hear what you're talking about, and you know, we, we we've got as as da former Dallas Cowboys, we got so much to talk about. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of players who don't have much to talk about, but we got a lot to talk about. So <laughs> let's talk about it because we've got, you know, we've got Emmett, you know, we've got Troy, we got yeah. Dion, we got. Ed Too Tall Jones. A I mean, lot of the great. Roger Staubach. I mean, we got 
Super Bowl this, Super Bowl that, and, um, and uh, we got Michael. So we got we got a lot of folks out, and, and the new the new guys. Uh, yeah, and that, that's why we get so mad at Tony because Tony always hating. Um, like he don't understand the meaning of what it is to be a cowboy, baby. He don't. He acts as if he don't understand. And then when yeah. we get customers on the line, he he, he badges the customers. <laughs> our client, our our participants, if they like the cowboys. That's what you yeah. you hear. You hear what Mr. Renfro said. We got a lot to talk about, baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, um, there was a question I wanted to ask. Here's the question I want to ask: What actually really happened? It's been 25 years. I'm not. This is. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not bashing the, your, your cowboys, ladies. Uh, but what happened to the cowboys? It's been 25 years now. What um, is it? Uh, the organization, or is it the coaching, or is it? Um, is they've been stagnant for 25 years? Yeah, you don't give me you're getting me in trouble here and saying something <laughs> I probably should say. Uh, well, I mean, I'll change you know, that. I'm I, asking I, another question. I, no, no I, I think uh, a few years back, or maybe a, quite a few years back, I, I think management might have gotten in the way of coaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if, if they just left coaching alone, they would have been a whole lot better. But management jumped in and and some problems started. And I think, think since then it just hadn't gotten any better. And I don't know if it ever will. Did you ever, did you ever, uh, did you ever have thought about coaching when you, when you retired after 14 years? Initially I did. Matter of fact, I went to St. Louis for one year. Uh, I scouted with the Cowboys for a year. And then I went to St. Louis with the uh, James Cardinals. Stallings and the Cardinals for a year and just didn't catch on. So um, uh, I would love to have coached, but, I guess it just wasn't in the cards for me. Because man, it, it, coaching now is it's 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 a uh, it's a shift in that. I mean, the, the, not just in financial, but uh, you you're not at one place all the time. Matter of fact, you this is it's a twenty almost a twenty four hour dog yeah. job. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 it's, it's big business. It's, it's a different world. Totally different world. Um, I know that a lot of people that have played in the NFL go on to do sports commentating and uh, TV shows and things of that nature. Were you ever interested or have you done anything like what we do here? Uh, like we sit and talk with Tony or done any sports commentating, talking, communications no. types of no. stuff? No, that, that was never, never my interest. Uh, I'm surprised y'all getting so much out of me that you are getting out of me tonight. Cause I, <laughs> I was known as an introvert and uh, very quiet and didn't really say very much, but, uh, I'll, I always say that if you got, a, if you got something to say, you know, you can say it, but if you got nothing to say, you keep quiet. So, uh, my wife does most of the talking. I'm a good, very good listener, but uh, when you have played for the count, and when you had the, the, the life I've had and had to, the sports uh, experiences that I've had and at the cowboy experiences I've had, then you've got something you can, you can talk about and you've had all the friends that I've had. So, and then, you know, and guys like Tony and, and being able to meet people like y'all who are very good and easy to talk to makes it easy for me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> of course, you know, I don't change. I'm always the same. Cause listen, <laughs> these young ladies have to keep me in line cause I get out of hand at times. But you you have a huge following here, and I'm sure we're going to have many, 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 many uh, comments and calls about you in this show here. And we want to let you know that we really appreciate you having a minute to stop by and say a few words and uh, let everybody know how well you're doing and how well you're looking. Because I'm telling you, hey, girls, he is 79 years old. I That's know. Right. I can't believe it. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm just excited about that, honey. He, he didn't give us the secret, but if it was a secret to get, I sure <laughs> hope he would text us or something so we can look that good when we turn <laughs> 70, about 80 years old. <laughs> yeah, my daddy's jeans. He passed them on to me. He was 80 years old. He looked like he was 40. Oh, wow. Bless his heart. I think it's that room for a blood, to be honest. There you go. I'm going to tell, right, tell you. Right, I'm going to tell, right, tell you. I got some in my family and they don't look at they over 40. 
15. Yes, oh, oh Liz, a lucky girl. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, um, any more girls? I just want to say oh. thank you. We appreciate you for taking a moment, and we are super excited to have you on. And you're looking well, and you have a great memory and a wonderful personality. And we are just excited and elated to have you on tonight. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. And thank you, Tony, for having me. And I'll look forward to the next time if that comes about. Yeah, I know you're not. I know you're not playing golf anymore. So we're we're trying to once this COVID nineteen is over with. I like to host. We like to host a golf tournament uh, in the future, near future, and uh, like to invite you down as our uh, what we call that, girls, our ambassador. <laughs> well, if, if health permitting, I'd love to come down and visit. Yes, and bring us little some helmets, and um, we'll get some. Bring your ring. Oh, yeah. don't bring it I'll, me. Don't I'll, bring I'll, it I'll, I'll, I'll bring I'll bring it all. I'll, I'll even bring the wife. Oh, oh yeah. good, good. And we'll all have right. our autograph deal party going on. We'll just get something going for you. But Mel, it's I appreciate you. It's it's been great to have you here and to see you doing so well. And, and I'm just we, you're blessed. Let's say Thank that. You. God is blessed you and and, uh, and I wish you all the best uh going forward. And uh, stay safe. Ladies, I'm going to let you guys close out for us. If you'd like to have, uh, have any last words. Oh, no. My last words would be just um, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with us a little bit and to shed some light on history um, and on the Cowboys culture. And uh, we have been really enlightened about some of the things you said, and you have been a light to us tonight. So we really appreciate you. And we hope to see you soon. All right. Thank you we're very much. About, we're talking about the legendary Mayor Renfro, uh, uh, Hall yeah. of Famer, um, uh, Dallas Cow former Dallas Cowboy All Pro selection for five straight years. Not five straight years, but five years, five time selection. Now that's that that don't happen often. That's my cousin right there, y'all. Everybody right. here. Thank you. God bless. And I appreciate you, Mel, again. And tell the family I say hello. And uh, we we'll come together again. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you for watching Knowledge is Power Podcast Live. Be sure to like and subscribe to all Knowledge is Power social media pages. Uh-huh. We still on here. I don't know how to turn this thing off.